Greetings, Internet. Today we're going to start with the idea that only the wrongdoer summons court. Whether they're the plaintiff or the defendant, only the wrongdoer summons court. Sometimes the plaintiff can be doing wrong and going after somebody who has done absolutely nothing wrong at all. If nobody did wrong, then there would be no need for court. If, if everybody could just love and respect one another and act Christ-like towards one another, then there would be no reason for court. With that being said, we're going to get into some documents, some personal documents. After I made the documentary about Henry, I was approached by an anonymous source who had Josephine's journals and diaries um, from back around the time that Henry and Josephine split up. I'm going to be going through some of these documents here with you today and explaining a few things that I see. This is a letter from her documents that she was keeping for her attorney. To Robert P. Brackett Jr., that's one of her attorneys, down here it says, Perhaps I should have taken an involuntary commitment. I did try, but Miss Ray did not go there with the procedure. When David saw attorney, not pursuing embezzlement, restraining order on kids, no. I'm guessing that the attorney is kind of telling her what she can and cannot do. Um, down here, number six, freeze accounts. Um, you come down here, number five, paperwork of 1515. Number six, Henry arrested for irrevocable trust embezzlement. 6A, file suit to bank, charges and parentheses. 6B, he betrayed the trust. Can trustees sue him? So they're probably asking the attorney if the trustees can sue Henry for betraying the trust. And, and looking through all of these documents, I don't see how he betrayed the trust. He embezzled from the trust. Basically, everything within the trust has been given to the trust by Henry himself. So, you can't really steal from yourself. Uh, down here it also says, prove he is not a responsible person. Um, so basically they're trying to say that, that he's not responsible. She'll actually say that he is incompetent. So this is April 3rd of 2013. It happened on a Wednesday. This is when she actually went in and the magistrate denied her 50B protective order. I'm guessing because she didn't have good enough lies that day. So, if you come down here, I saw Miss Ray. She said, I think he needs a mental evaluation at Party Hospital. We will get him there at 6 p.m. Lena was with me. She kept the restraining order. So this is on Friday when she goes back to get Thomas McAvoy Britton to sign a restraining order, which he actually does. So I went early to see Miss Ray, but Monica Jernigan said she did not know why they did not send Henry to party. Also, she said go back and get a restraining order 50B. And that's where she goes back and gets Thomas McAvoy Britton to sign the 50B restraining order. This is on April 30th of 2013. Dina said her dad is calling all the girls and telling them, I want Henry committed lies, lies, and lies. But that's a good idea. My attorney said I should have gotten a involuntary committal instead. This is almost a month after she went in to try and get an involuntary committal and because family members are telling other family members she's saying that they're lying and that her attorney's telling her that she should have gotten an involuntary committal all throughout this she talks about having henry locked up having him arrested and there are a couple of places where she speaks ill will of her children so this is Friday, May 3rd of 2013. She's speaking about her attorney. She's saying that 
Henry committed fraud on the trust. The attorney wanted to see the papers. She's going to give him the trust papers on Monday. Okay, so this is Saturday, May 11th. She's uh, writing to her attorneys talking about stop this nonsense of the money. She has legal rights, so she wants the money. Uh, lawyers and judges together, they did not know about the kids. No more money. Get them out. So no money to the kids. She wants all of the money to herself. Get Henry in jail and leave him there. This will straighten him out and his daughter. To have better control of him as his legal wife, and if he is in jail, allow no one to visit him. He has dementia, and control of him must be me. Take care of the finances. How can I get him in jail? Then file what has to be done. Cut off the children. Get rid of them as they are interfering with him. She wishes to cut out her own children and put her husband in jail or have him committed in some type of way. Okay, here's a kind of miscellaneous paper. Embezzlement charges against Henry. Restraining orders against Glenn, Gary, Gregory, and Joni. These are all of her children. Do not allow entry into trust property. Um, so she's basically trying to get it to where they cannot go on to their own property that they all hold together in a common law private trust. And that's what the last video was about. This is not in her handwriting, so I believe that maybe David wrote this, which is her son that she does actually talk to and, and has feelings for because he handles a lot of her business with the attorneys. So it says involuntary commitment at magistrates, guardianship proceedings at clerks, so number one, number two, and then this is why I definitely know that it wasn't her who wrote it, um, for at court, if Henry does, sh does show up, ask judge for a continuance so that you can hire an attorney. So clearly he's talking to Josephine. This was a document that was addressed to Joni. We believe that it was actually 2013 and not 2012. He will release the money for bills which he has seen a paper copy. The trustee was not paying the bills for Henry from his trust. It was making it very difficult. His phone got cut off. Down here at the bottom, I'm certain Henry can make an emergency call from the phone he got at Walgreens, since I've witnessed him making secret calls to you and your brothers in the garage using that phone. Josephine's upset that Henry got a phone to make calls to his daughter and his children. From what I understand, that was probably one of the things that led to the divorce and separation. Okay, so this is just some miscellaneous notes. Dissolve the trust now. Down here, he has set up new trust with a new EIN number. Fraud, get the kids out too. So again, she wants to give the kids nothing. She believes that Henry's committing fraud. And I don't even know where she gets the idea that he set up a new trust or a new EIN number. It, it just goes to show she is not thinking properly and she appears to be paranoid and that the rest of the family is out to get her so she is going to get them first the document says david and i gave tyler ray that's her one of her attorneys this paper on august 5th 2013 file charges versus henry ramo and kids for laundering embezzling fraud behind trustees back again i don't know what they're talking about with this freeze accounts including henry and children and this is a document august 7th that she wrote to her counselor tyler ray i am giving you the rest of the paper work on the trust 
So she gave him all of the paperwork on the trust. She has had the trust in her possession. So here's an email from Thunderhead Productions to Lena Ramo. Thunderhead Productions, I can only assume, is David Ramo. Uh, subject, Attorney Tyler Race. Over here, secondly, please review the trust paperwork assuring us we are acting appropriately. The trustees request you file paperwork to have them take over, protect, and occupy the 295 Thomas Road House property. And that was the property that Henry Ramo got kicked out of when it went into foreclosure proceedings because the trustees were not paying the bills on that property. Lena Ramo is faxing and mailing you the originals of the trespass notice sent certified re mail receipt attached to Joni, Gary, Glenn, and Gregory Ramo, directing them to stay away from the 295, 293 Thomas Road and 1515 Fifth Avenue property, which all of those are held in a common law private trust, and everyone mentioned there has vested interest in that property. So it would basically be like me going down to the sheriff's office and getting a trespass notice and sending it to you to stay off of your own property. So down here, it talks about how they wish to uh, liquidate and distribute the properties and what is in the trust. Um, and so some of the things that they're talking about, Henry Ramo will receive the net proceeds of the sale of 290. 5 Thomas Road property house providing that Josephine Ramo receives the 293 lot, which the 293 lot was already paid off for. The net proceeds from the 295 Thomas Road property would have been very minimal. Josephine will receive the Osmobile. Henry will receive Maeve Steam Vent listed under the trust. I don't really know what that is, but a steam vent can't be worth a lot. They're going to separate the burial plots. Josephine will receive approximately $300 from Henry Ramos Social Security checks each month. They have property up in New York, which they wish for it to be released into an escrow account with the trustees having the sole power to write checks out of that account. They're telling... Henry Ramo to sign paperwork protecting the trust trustees Josephine and David from any future lawsuits because I would imagine that they would know what they're doing is illegal and unlawful. Uh, they're requesting that Mr. Ramo drop the lawsuit that he has already filed against Josephine, David, and Gina. They're saying that a bank account he created in the name of High Peak Trust is illegal and must be shut down immediately. They're saying that he has to dissolve all of his trust they created in the past and fear that it will be used against the trustees Josephine and David in return for basically Henry giving up everything that he had worked his entire life to get. They're going to refrain from him filing embezzlement charges against Henry, Glenn, Gregory, Gary and Joni, which I don't think they had any embezzlement charges, refrain from informing the IRS and presenting documentation against Henry Ramo for tax evasion. I don't believe that he did that either. Refrain from presenting the names and address of his patriot friends that he used to hide and embezzle past funds and properties with. There's no evidence of anything I've ever seen that would show he's embezzled any properties. It appears to me that all of the properties that he has, he has worked really hard for his entire life. He put them into a common law private trust, and now his wife, along with uh, the trustees of the trust, have basically cut him out of everything. Here is a email that was sent October 15th of 2013 to Mr. Brackett and Mr. Ray. Where are we at with the bank account and control of the funds? Trustees would like Mr. Ray to handle the income until everything is settled. 
All they're really worried about are the funds and having control of them. It is all about power and control. So here is a, another document from Thunderhead Productions. Appears to be addressed to Mr. Ray. Down here it talks about how he was talking with Joni. And uh, Joni said that her mom stole uh, the 1515 Fifth Avenue property. He tells her to be careful about how she used the word stole, and now with the documents from the Registry of Deeds, she really has stolen the uh, 1515 Fifth Avenue property. Not only that, but she's already sold the 293 property without giving any share of the proceeds to the other beneficiaries of the trust, which is highly, highly illegal. Then here on the back, it has, um, I have two important questions. One of those, can we, the trustees, myself and my mother, take possession of the 295 property to protect the property inside of my father and sister becoming difficult? Um, so basically, in all of these emails, their main concern has been about taking control of trust assets and trust finances. They're greatly concerned about getting them away from the Henry Ramo, the creator of the trust, and his children that he decided to have a relationship with, that Josephine Ramo was upset with him about sneaking out to the garage and what type of man should have to sneak out to the garage to call his own children anyways because his wife finds it to be a problem that's absolutely insane in my opinion so last but not least and just to show how pre-planned all of this stuff was here are some documents you can see that they're dated for 4-26 of 2013, these documents talk about guardianship services for aging adults. Um, you saw in Josephine's journal how she was, she kept on talking about getting Henry committed to a hospital. Um, of course, they have things lined, underlined, and highlighted that I'm guessing they found very important. So, again, these came from Josephine's personal documents. So, we know that she was doing research on the internet to get Henry committed. And here is a womanslaw.org. You can see 417 of 2013. She was actively online trying to figure out how to move the court in her direction. And this is one of the problems, is that it appears kind of by the system that we have that good people who are trying to do honest things, who don't really know how the legal system works or how the court structure works, they are getting really, really hurt by people who are conniving and manipulative. And we have got to start paying more attention to our family and our friends because a lot of the stuff that's going on in society, we're doing it to each other. And we have to learn how to love one another, how to be more Christ-like. Being a Christian, in my mind, means that you are actively trying to walk in the footsteps of Christ. And a lot of the stuff that I see going on in society, a lot of the stuff that I see people doing to one another, it's not Christ-like. I see people being like Josephine and only being out and in it for themselves and not performing righteousness and God's work and God's glory. And if we keep doing that, we are going to deserve the society that we live in right now. So come on, people. Let's try and make this a better place. Let's try and make this a better world, if not for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. Thank you. The state of North Carolina helped Josephine Coker Ramo rob me of my property. State of North Carolina allowed Josephine Ramo to rob me of my property.
The state of North Carolina allowed Josephine Ramo to rob me of my property. The state of North Carolina helped Josephine Ramo rob me of my property. I think that they're just, I hate to say it, they're useless to me. And they're useless to themselves. They don't, they don't have opportunities and they don't grasp them. They, they just, they just, I don't know what happened to them. They just grew up, I thought they were going to be men, the babies. They expect you to still be their father and take care of them like their children. They're adults. They can't even take care of their, they couldn't take care of their wives. They couldn't take care of their kids. So the hate so, and so, anxiety was so I think not against me then? No, no, because oh. I felt sorry for you for listening to them. That's all I felt for you. So I think, uh, you think I was controlled by them? Definitely. Controlled because you wanted to be controlled. Because you thought they were going to help you. I don't know how you thought they were going to help you. Because so far your, your house, our house, went into foreclosure. The trust is kaput. The money's in New York you can't get. Everything's gone. And is that what they want? Because they don't have anything? They don't want us to have anything? This is something wrong with them. They're not even thinking right. So if you wish to see justice for Henry Ramo, an 87-year-old Korean War veteran, or if you believe that no man should be above the law, and that no man should be beneath the law, or if you just wish to follow us and see what videos we'll be coming out with in the future, you can go to jcshamanandbaba.com, scroll down here to the bottom, put in your name and email address, and then you can subscribe for email updates and stay in contact with us, or you can email us at jc.s.baba30 at gmail.com. Thank you for watching the video, and please stick with us, we'll have more to come.